How can I add another column to this result set which says odd even, odd even, odd even, alternating after each row? Hello, I'm Philip Burton of filecats.co.uk. So what I've got here is a very simple data set and it doesn't matter what the values are. In fact, I could just be saying hello as the value each time. It really doesn't matter what the values are. What I do want is a new column which says in the first row, odd, second row, even, third row, odd, fourth row, even, and so on. Now, it might be that you want it to say true, false, or yes, no. This would work for all of these. So if you want to do this as a practice activity, why not give this a go? So just take any table, it doesn't matter what the table is, and just create another column which has odd, even, odd, even. As I say, it doesn't rely on anything else in the data set. It just alternates with each row. So each row's value will be different from the row above and the row below. Good luck. Right, if you want to see how I would work on this, the first thing I need is the row number. So the row number is literally the number of the row in the data set. And it just comprises of two things. First of all, we've got the word row number. Now notice that there is a underscore between row and number. It's not just one word. And then we have got open and close brackets and with nothing in them, then a space, and then the word over. Now what this is saying is over what are you using the row number? Now, if you're looking at more advanced functions like lag and lead, these are called window functions. We might be using this a lot more broadly than what we're going to be doing here. We might want it to restart part of the way through the row set, for instance. But here we just want to start at the beginning and go all the way to the end. So all we have to do is put in an order by. Now, you may be used to having an order by right at the end. So I could say, okay, give me the object ID and order by the object ID, either ascending, which is the default, or descending. So that is the order by when used as part of the select from where group by having order by. But in this case, the order by goes in the over like that. So exactly the same terminology. So you could do order by a certain thing ascending or descending. So you could put ascending or descending if you want, or if you don't put anything, it's going to be ascending by default. So I'll close the bracket and that is our row number function. So it needs to know what it's going to use in terms of deciding what is row one, what is row two and so forth. And order by is required. So here you can see the result. So our first row has a number one, second, two, and so on, and goes all the way down to 103 in my particular data set. So now the next question is, okay, how can we say that the first one is odd, second one is even, third one is odd, fourth one is even? So in this particular example, you can see more clearly that this is what happens when you divide by two. If it divides by two evenly, then it's even, if it has a remainder, then it's odd. So what we want to do is to get the remainder. Now, it could be that there are various complicated ways you can do this. We could divide by 2.0, for instance. Now, firstly, why am I dividing by 2.0? Well, let's have a look at what happens when I do. We've got 0 0.5, 1.0, 1.5, 2.0, 2.5, and so on. This happens because I'm dividing a integer, so a number without any fractions. Technically in SQL, an integer is a number between around minus two billion and plus two billion, but let's just have it as a number without any fractions. And I'm dividing that by number with a decimal place, albeit that the decimal place is 0 0.0. If I omit the 0, 0.0, then I'm dividing an integer by an integer. So the result of an integer divided by a decimal is a decimal. The result of an integer divided by an integer is an integer. So do be careful 
if you are doing division with an integer and another integer. So what we could do then is to see, okay, is there a 0.5 at the end? Now, this is one way that you could do it, and it's a bit complicated. So what we'll do is say, okay, we've got this, and we're going to subtract from that, this again, and I might as well just put these in brackets. So at the moment, I'm deducting one thing from the same thing. So that will give me zero. But what I want to do with this is have this as the integer. So I could say, divide this by two. So we've previously seen, if I just put a comma here, that will get 0 0.5 and 0, 1 and 1, 1 1.5 and 1, 2 and 2, and so on. So if I was to do that, then we'd get a half, 0, a half, 0, a half, 0. So that's one way of doing this. It's not the way that I prefer to do it, so, but it is a valid way. So I'm just going to delete all of this and just start again. So what I want to do is divide by 2, but get the remainder. And the easiest way for me to do that is by using the percentage sign. So this says divide by and just give me the remainder. So in this case, divide by two and give me the remainder. Now this percentage sign is called the modulus or modulo. So it depends on what you are used to, whether it's the modulus or the modulo. So let's have a look and see what happens when I execute this. And now you can see the remainder. So one, zero, one, zero, one, zero. So now we've got this differentiation, however you do it, between these rows. How can we convert this into odd and even? Well, one way is to use the case. So case of this. Now, when this is equal to one, then give me odd. Now notice I'm not saying when equals one, I'm just saying when one. Alternatively, when zero, then even. And then at the end of a case, we need an end. So this is my result. So that's converted the ones to odd and the zero to evens. Now what happens if there wasn't one or zero? Let's say I was dividing by three instead. So there is a when two, which I'm not catching. Anything that I'm not catching, so when two, is currently coming up as null. If I wanted to catch everything else, then I could say else everything else. And so instead of null, I will have in this case, everything else. Now that won't come up if I'm doing a modulo two, because the answer is always going to be one or zero and I'm catching them. However, this default area, the else, is very useful just in case you have a situation when it might not be one or the other and you want to be able to catch it and you don't want a null. So this is how we can get odd and even on every alternate row. We get the row number, we have to order by something, then we divide it by two and get the remainder in the modulus or modulo, and then we surround that with a case. So when the remainder is one, then odd or false or no, or whatever you choose to do. When it's zero, then even or true or yes, and you can have an else to catch everything else, but make sure, because it's a case, that you have an end at the end. Now, just one more thing. There is one alternate way of using the case. In this particular version, I'm saying case and give me an expression that gives me a number, and then I test it when one, when zero. The alternative is to introduce this each time. So when this is equal to one, when this is equal to zero. That works just as well. Personally, I prefer the other way because then I'm only saying what I'm capturing once and then I'm testing it. There are many times when I have to use this way because I have to say when something is equal to one, when something else is equal to one then. But if you're just 
looking for the one thing, if you're testing the one item multiple times, then you can use either method. They're both completely fine. So this is how we can say odd and even on alternate rows. Well, I hope that you enjoyed this practice activity. If you did, why not like the video? Subscribe to my YouTube channel and click that bell so that you can be notified of more videos when they come out. If you want more practice activities, please click the link on your screen. Or why not join me in my Udemy courses where you can learn about TSQL, Database Administration, SSRS, SSAS, SSIS and more. There are full details in the description to this video or on my website, filecats.co.uk. Thank you very much for watching this and keep learning.